everybody out there in YouTube land, and welcome to DC Fans United. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to kind of do a freestyle rant. Normally I have somewhat of a script that I work off of, although when I do reviews I basically just flip through the pages and talk about it. So um, there's been a lot on my mind lately about the comic book industry, and there's been a lot of conversations and debate about it online. Basically, if you aren't aware, the print media industry has been collapsing for quite some time. Newspapers and magazines bore the brunt of it for a long time, but really in the last year or two we've seen a huge decrease in the amount of sales of printed comic books. So the digital sales might be okay, but they don't really publish numbers on those too much. So the main thing, I think there's basically two or three factors that are hurting the comic book industry right now. The primary one, like I mentioned, is just print media is old school. It's kind of dying. I still buy printed comics and quite a few people do, but the numbers are just terrible. It's, it, there's, it's, it's worse than you would think, all right. I'll, uh, I'll show some numbers here I got off of Comicron.com, but like, for the last month, okay, we only had three comic books that sold over 100,000 units. You say, okay, 100,000 units, that's pretty good. Except, okay, there's there were literally oh, three about 300 titles on the shelf. Okay, 300. Really like 250 to 300. About 100 of those are Marvel books. And I'll get into why Marvel is a big problem here in a second. But the big issue is, you're talking about three, book, three books selling 100,000 issues. And number one actually was Metal, Dark Knight's Metal, number one. And that sold 260,000 units, which, you know, that's great. But looking back to around the year 2000 or in the 90s, or heaven forbid, going back to the 70s or 80s, books were moving many units. You know, the number one book would be selling over 500,000. Now you have to take the top five and add them together, and it still wouldn't make that. So there's just a lot less books being sold to begin with, and I'm sure you've noticed the local comic book shops have been closing down all across the country, um, and a lot of the ones that are still open are having to transition into selling games and other things to stay in business, particularly those little Funko dolls that you see everywhere. Profit margin on those things must be phenomenal. So the main problem with comic books right now, in my opinion, is just print media is dying. Okay. But they could still be making lots of money selling digital comics, right? So here's the big issue that I have and that a lot of people have is Marvel Comics. I'm a DC fan, always have been, always will be, but Marvel is the lifeblood of the industry. They sell the most units. Well, they used to. They didn't last month, but they're supposed to. But right now you've got stuff like The Amazing Spider-Man, he sold 50,000 units. Okay, we have a country of a third of a billion people. That's just our country, too. I talk to people overseas in Australia and whatnot. They buy comic books, so you're looking at a market of probably a couple billion people and you're selling 50,000 on Spider-Man a month after Spider-Man Homecoming came out? That's just ridiculous. And that is the core of the overall problem. Marvel, they have a litany of problems. First of all, a lot of their books are just bad, straight up bad. America is bad, I don't care what you say. Squirrel Girl is bad. You know, they've got a ton of books that they should just cancel. They're selling less than 10,000 units. You know, you've got indie books like Shirtless Bear Fighter outselling many Marvel books. So that's pretty astonishing when you think about it. And yeah, Marvel is just really dropping the ball all over the place. They've got all these events going at the same time. You've got Secret Empire, which has a thousand tie-ins, you've got Generations, you've got Legacy coming up, Weapons of Mutant Destruction, WMD, okay that's like a mini-series, but like dude no one's talking about that. In the 90s, that alone would have been a huge event. People would be talking about that every day. You know, you've got this creature that's like a Hulk, Wolverine, Cross. You've got a Hulk with an adamantium skeleton, and no one's talking about it. They've got all these other great books, too, like Thanos, Cable, X-Men Gold's pretty good. I'm not even a Marvel fan, and I'll admit that, but they aren't promoting them. You've got all this garbage up in the forefront. Meanwhile, you have all of these people who work for Marvel, who are comic book pros, writers, 
and artists and stuff. And if you follow them on social media, they barely talk about their comic books. All they talk about are politics and current events and stuff that you don't care about. I went on Twitter and followed about 100 comic book pros, and barely any of them actually talk about their books. Kurt Busiak, and I love Astro City and some of his other books. Uh, well, actually, he did write some Marvel stuff. I have uh, his Marvel's books that he did with Alex Ross. Okay, he's a great writer, but you would never know it if you follow him on social media. So honestly, Marvel just needs to get it together. They've got these movies in the theaters that are making them billions of dollars. I know, oh, I know, I know, I know, Marvel Studios and Marvel Comics aren't the same people. They're owned by the same company, okay? So, when you walk into a comic book shop, if you're looking at Marvel, you would expect to see, oh, Tony Stark from the movie, you know, you'd expect to see Captain America from the movie. But no, you got this freaking Nazi Captain America, who's literally a Nazi, working for Hydra. You've got Riri Williams, who is is the distaff version of Iron Man and she still goes by the name Iron Man even though she's a 15 year old girl and she's a random girl they just kind of made up and pulled out of the woodwork if you were gonna pass the torch of Iron Man on to someone and you wanted it to be a girl there were plenty of characters they could have used to do that for people were talking about War Machine has a female relative who's like his niece or something who would have been the perfect age but they made up this random character and she's just terrible same thing for all of their characters Characters. You go into the store and you're looking for Bruce Banner. You can't find him. They've got this guy named Amadeus Cho who's the Hulk. So, in my opinion, basically Marvel needs to get back to basics, get back to what they were doing when they were moving hundreds of thousands of units. Maybe they need to drop the cover price on their stuff, honestly. They need to figure out a better way to distribute comics because right now Diamond Distributors has an, a monopoly on comic book distribution. So, right now you pay about half the cover price. So you buy a comic book for four dollars. Two of those dollars are going to Diamond to distribute the comics. They're just a middleman and they're taking most of the profit. Another quarter of that is maybe going to the publisher and the artist and all those guys. They're going to split it and then maybe a quarter of it is going to the comic book shop. So for every book the comic book shop is selling, they're making a dollar maybe and they have to buy the books and fit in all their other costs into that dollar. So it's not even profit entirely. So that is a lot of why the comic book industry is failing. I think it's three reasons. The primary reason is print media is just fading away, which I think they could honestly work around. A lot of comic books are purchased by people who are like 30 and older. They're not going to stop buying print, so that's fine. And yeah, just transition into digital sales for the younger market. But you look at Comixology, all right, there's a lot of digital comics out there. But you look at the Marvel books and they're just trying to give them away, honestly. They're they're cheap and sometimes they're free. So their digital profits can't be too good either. I'm really wondering why they don't cancel like 30 of their books and just focus on their good ones. This is kind of just a rambling thing, but I've, it's, it's a lot that's been on my mind lately and a lot of people have been talking about it. Oh, and another thing with Marvel, what's the deal with the Venomverse? Okay, they've got literally everyone in the entire Marvel Universe is a freaking Venom now. Like, that's just, that's like jumping the shark to the 10th degree. They're doing all this stuff that is so lame and cheesy. And once in a while, when they have something that looks like it might be cool, like Generations, it's just a 12-shot comic. It's just to build up their new crappy distaff characters that no one likes. And it's just terrible. But one good thing is DC is still crushing it. They're basically holding the market up on their shoulders right now. The top three selling books were, you know, Metal and two Batman books. So that's the way you do it. You have one event at a time, you really back it, you hire good writers, you have good artists, and you just pump out some good material. You know, no one was expecting Mr. Miracle number one to be such a great book, but you know what? That's DC. They hire good writers and they let them write. Tom King is really an amazing writer, and you know, <laughs> what I don't understand too is why these comic book shops don't order more books, you know, ahead of time. They, they buy like the wrong stuff. You know, I go into my my local comic book shop oh can I get Mr. Miracle number one and he's kind of like you know he almost laughs he's like no dude that's been sold out for so long but I'll have the second printing soon and it's just like dude why don't you buy more in the first place you got a stack of Secret Empire and Squirrel Girl no one's buying but then you order like two Mr. Miracle copies and two uh, Elmer Fudd number 
you know, Batman Elmer Fudds. It's like, come on, guy. He needs to really get... That's another thing, too. A lot of these comic book shop owners, they're still stuck in the 90s. They're ordering all this Marvel that no one is buying. They need to get online. They need to see the buzz. They need to check Bleeding Cool before the stuff comes out. Order 50 copies of Mr. Miracle. He would have sold every one. None of us are going to go in there and buy a second printing. No one wants a second printing. I might as well just buy a digital copy. All right, so this is totally different from any other video I've made so far, but it's the weekend. I got to do a special weekend video, and I've got a lot going on. Oh, also, so I've got another super villain biography coming out and more traditional comic book reviews and all that. If you like this kind of video where I just talk and express my opinion, let me know down in the comments. I really would like to know what you think if this kind of video is worth doing or I should just stick with what I normally do. All right, that's all for now. And as always, thank you for being a part of DC Fans United. End of line.